Hey, I'm Ozzy from Three Monkey Solderless, and we're back on the Brad Guitar Project, the Cooter Caster. And um, what we're going to do, how we're going to start this project, basically, is we're going to um, build the neck first, and then mate that to the body. Um, I always think it's a good idea for your guitar um, neck pocket to be nice and tight. Not overly tight, but snug, right? So it doesn't move, it doesn't shift, it doesn't tend to knock out a tune, um, especially if it's a stage guitar, which this is going to be. And with Dad, with uh, Brad, you know, jumping around like a madman, um, we're going to want it to stay in tune. So um, we've got ourselves the first step, which is to rough out out of this blank, this maple blank, um, our basic shape. Um, using our template. We have our plexiglass template double stick tape onto the uh, wood itself. Um, then we have our black uh, magic marker line that we're going to saw into as a guide. Um, and then we'll finish up the profile on the router table. This is a, a Stumac blank. It's a flat sawn piece of maple. Um, and we're going to do this neck without a truss rod. I was thinking about using a truss rod. But I think I want to try one without a truss rod. Uh, Leo was of the opinion, I think, that you didn't need one. Um, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I know that Brad already has one guitar that doesn't have a truss rod in it. So um, it's been proven out on the road. So we're going to try this without a truss rod. So it's going to be a two-piece construction, however. We're going to be gluing a fingerboard onto this blank once it's roughed out. All right, so the first thing to do is on the bandsaw, if you go ahead and... Um, basically shape or cut out the basic shape a little oversize and use your dust mask, right? And you're also going to want to use some hearing protection, which I have somewhere around here. Okay. Always come prepared, right? So here's our hearing protection. It can get a little loud and use a vacuum for cleanliness. So let's get started. Okay, so there we have um, basic shape cut out, just about, I don't know, 16th an inch oversize that we're going to clean up over on the router table. So um, we're also going to be doing, um, obviously at this point, well actually next, we'll be putting in the tuners. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways you can sort of build a neck in terms of procedure and, um, you know, what steps you follow in what order. Um, a lot of it depends upon what tools you have available, um, what makes sense to you, what jigs you have available. Um, it's always a good idea to plan everything out on paper to make sure that once you do something, it doesn't preclude you from proceeding to another step. So for instance, you know, like it, an obvious one would be um, if you've already, let's say, attached a fingerboard and you want it to rest on a perfectly flat surface and it starts rocking, um, to do another, let's say, machining of the back of the neck, then obviously you want to do the machining before you do the fingerboard. So, you know, these are things to think about. So I have my ways of doing things. Um, and those change probably for every type of guitar and sometimes for every time I build a guitar. Um, so I wrote out my list and we're just going to go with that. So the next step on my list is to bring it over to the router table and, um, you know, finish up the shape. So we'll see you over there. Okay, so we're over at the router table getting ready to, uh, you know, final shape this. Um, we've got a top guide or top bearing guide spiral uh, router bit in there. Um, and our neck and our template attached still. Um, and the only real good piece of advice I think that's, that's out there for, for this kind of thing is obviously don't cut your fingers off. 
um, wear protective equipment and all that good stuff, but also I'm um, kind of understand where, where your dangers are of having what's called blowout or ruining the neck by taking a chunk out of the uh, out of the wood that will prevent you from you know obtaining your shape. Um, there are a few places where you're plump, prone to have blowout, and those are basically where the cutter itself is cutting into the grain upward. So, like for instance, um, you can see that the grain would normally be going parallel instead of tapered, right? With the, with your initial board, so. When you're going in this direction, you're cutting into the grain and you have more chance of blowing out. When you're going this way, you really don't have any real, I mean, you're not going to blow out too easily going this way as you're constantly um, sort of chopping away at the end grain there. Um, another place would be up here, right where you start to make the turn back inside again. You're going to be going sort of into the grain at the top here. Here's going to be pretty breezy. Uh, but up here you can risk blowing out some stuff as you make the turn. Um, here you're going to have a little bit of a chance as well. So um, using a spiral bit is really a good idea as it cuts not the whole way all the time. It kind of cuts at an angle in a sense. So you're not really allowing the router bit to get a good grab on one particular section of the neck that where it can peel off a, a chunk of the wood. So anyway, that's, that's sort of my advice. Um, so we're just going to go ahead put on our mask and our hearing protection, then we're going to go ahead and just start machining this neck. Okay, so there you have it. We've got it machined down nicely to the line. Um, no blowouts, nice and smooth. These spiral bits are really sharp. Keep them sharp um, and they'll do you well. So um, we're ready to go on to the next step, which would be to um, just pinch out, or pinch out, prick out um, the tuner holes here with a 16th inch, 16th inch drill bit. And we're gonna head over to the drill press to do that. All right, so we're over at the drill press and we're going to do um, just the beginnings of the tuner um, machine head hole sort of operation. And it's a uh, sort of like a three-step operation, okay? Because we're going to be doing um, vintage style tuners, right? The old style tuners. So um, the first thing we're going to do is just uh, basically mark through on our template with a 16th inch bit. Um, just basically kind of kiss the wood a little bit to give ourselves our, our, um, our location point with the 16th inch bit. Then we're going to change out to uh, a quarter inch bit, right? And we're going to go all the way through um, with the quarter inch. Um, and then the next thing is, well, I've got this neck here, which is like an old style fender neck. Um, and you can see it uses these ferrules, right? And the tuner goes through the back and these ferrules are sort of pressed in to the wood itself. Um, and the ferrules are a little larger, obviously, than the, than the quarter inch that the shaft of the tuner um, requires. So um, I basically use these, which is something you can get um, from Stu Mac. And I'll kind of show you, it's a reamer. Um, and what it has is a little quarter inch tip on there that can go into um, the quarter inch hole that you drill out. And then it will ream out See it kind of fit in there, and then it'll ream out a flat-bottomed sort of um, countersunk hole that you can press the ferrule into. So that will be done not now, but as you can see also, right there's this little that's thin here, and there's a little kind of a contour here going up to the fingerboard. And on our neck, as it sits right now, it's you know thick. So this operation of sort of reaming out for the for the ferrule press and ferrule is to be done after the headstock is thickness and the transition is made um, and the fingerboard is attached so for now we're just going to do the 16th inch 
sort of kiss and then the quarter inch through. So we're going to go, go ahead and, uh, and start that. Just kind of kissing it, giving it down, you know, maybe a, I don't know, three sixteenths. Just enough basically to get the brad point of the, uh, of the bit, of the quarter inch bit, a place to get through or to grab onto or to locate on. So um, now I've got our holes drilled for that. So the next step is basically to take off um, this template. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll be right back. So I just quickly remove the template uh, with a um, metal spatula. And if, just a tip, um, if you wanna start the spatula on the headstock here and dig it in and rip it off, that's the place to do it since this wood's gonna be removed anyway, you won't be scarring anything. Um, if you try to remove it down at the heel end or on the sides, you risk denting your wood and then creating a problem. So you could do it up there. So the next step is gonna be obvious as we said, to drill out um, from a quarter inch all the way through. I've got a backing board on the press. So I've got it all clamped down and it's nice and rigid. Um, and going slow is the key to avoid blowout on the back of the neck and having a fresh, clean, flat surface to drill through. Um, some guys will also do something where they would drill all the way through um, with, a, with, let's say, a 16th inch and then drill from both sides to avoid blowout. But in my experience, sometimes that 16th inch bit tends to wander and you don't end up with, your, with the same straight line on the other side. So I, it's, you know, pick your poison sort of deal. So we're just gonna go this way. So the tr trick again is to go slow and keep down pressure. Kind of working it. Keep the neck pressed firmly against the backing board. So that way there's no space there and it can drill. Okay. Now let's just give a quick look at it. As you can see, we've got a nice clean hole with no tear out or anything. And we also have now a hole that the bit will go into and it won't tear out from this point forward. So that's the reason for clamping this board down and making sure everything's good and rigid. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and keep drilling out the rest of these uh, holes and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so we have all of our holes drilled out. So that's good, no tear out, went smoothly. Um, I'm ready to go on to the next step, um, which is fingerboard related. Um, so we have our fingerboard here, and this has already had the work done to it. It's a 10 inch maple um, radius, 10 inch radius uh, maple. So it's vintage sort of correct. Um, this is going to, um, you know, sort of speed up our work a little bit. Um, I do make fingerboards, and they're not very difficult to do. Um, it's, I find though, honestly, um, if you're not using exotic woods, like I, I'm, if I'm using Brazilian rosewood or something like that, um, I'll make my own fingerboard, because obviously you can't buy those fingerboards anywhere, so you would need to make them, and I have jigs for slotting and for radiusing and all that kind of good stuff, um, and uh, the different scale length slots, but for let's say something kind of like plain vanilla like a you know a, a maple board um at stew mac you can get a pre-radius pre-slotted board for about the price as you would get for you know the raw lumber so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to make your own fingerboards unless you're really trying to do something exotic um so i've got this one from from stew mac and it's a really nice piece and i recommend you know stew mac's pretty good they got a lot of nice stuff there um, so you might want to check them out. So the next step is going to be basically um, to line this um, fretboard onto the neck, right, to get it in the right place. Um, centered, straight, and with the appropriate um, ending, right? So we're going to end this guitar neck at, you know, the, what, the 21st fret. Um, so we're going to need to make sure that everything is sort of in the right place. 
And then what we're going to do basically is we're going to double stick tape this, this neck down onto, um, or rather double stick this fingerboard down onto this neck stock. And then we're going to uh, drill through in a few places, three places, into the fret slot itself with a 16th inch bit for alignment holes uh, for later. And then we're going to bandsaw and route the neck, or rather the, uh, the fingerboard, to shape to match the neck itself. And then we can remove the fingerboard and we can start to work on the profile of the back of the neck and the headstock without having the fingerboard attached where it'll rock if we need to sit it flat, which you'll, you'll sort of see where I'm going with this in a little bit. Um, but we'll be able to re then relocate the fingerboard onto the neck using those pilot holes with a 16th inch little, um, basically, um, you know, bit to kind of register it in the exact place you need it to be when we glue it on finally. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and line this stuff all up and get a double stick tape down and then we'll go ahead and, and bandsaw it and route it to profile uh, as well as drilling out for the position markers. So uh, we'll be right back with the neck. Alright so we're back now and we've got our fingerboard attached to our neck blank with the double stick tape all the way around. Um, we've lined it up so that the appropriate uh, fret is at the end of the fingerboard itself as this is a vintage style neck not with the overhang. Um, we've centered it and we've also drawn our black marker line that we can use to follow on the bandsaw. So um, all that's left to do basically now is just bandsaw it out on the uh, bandsaw here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we can bring it over to the router table and uh, clean it up and then drill our uh, marker positions. Alright, so we've got the board basically roughed out to the shape and uh, now we're just going to go ahead and take off that last bit of wood over on the router table. Alright, so we're back over at the router table. Uh, we still have our spiral bit mounted from earlier and we're going to go ahead and use that for just uh, trimming the fingerboard down to the shaft stock. Um, and we're going to use the same precautions as before, being careful when going into the grain and uh, hopefully we won't get any chip outs as, um, you know, the fingerboards with the fret slots, um, they tend to have a tendency to want to, tend to have a tendency, they tend to want to uh, chip out a little bit easier than, uh, let's say, unmachined or unworked wood. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, see what we end up with. Okay, so uh, that went very smoothly. As you can see, we had no, uh, no blowouts. Everything went very well. Um, the next step is going to be to drill through the fret slots with a 16th inch bit 
um, in three places to create uh, guide holes for when we're going to reattach this fingerboard when we're gluing it on. Um, so we'll go over to the drill press and do that. Okay, so we're back at the drill press and we've got our 16th inch bit chucked in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill three holes in a triangular pattern right through the fret slots so that when you know when you fret them you're not going to see the holes and they're not going to interfere with anything um, we're going to do one at the first and probably two more um, at like the 15th 17th fret and this will uh, really allow us to relocate the fretboard back onto the shaft anytime we want um, and then be able to work on the neck without the fingerboard on it and then replace the fingerboard in the exact right position when we glue it on so i'm going to go ahead and uh, and drill these holes right now. They'll probably go maybe an eighth or so into the uh, into the shaft wood itself. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. I mean, theoretically, you could even just use the position markers. I just thought of that right now to drill through, but um, we didn't think of it before, so we're doing it this way. Either way is fine, but uh, this is gonna work out great. So now we can go ahead and remove the fingerboard from the shaft, and we'll be able to relocate it with the use of uh, a couple of drill bits in the right place anytime we want. So let's go ahead and uh, just use our little spatula here. And very carefully as it's, you know, it's sawed, so you don't want to break this fingerboard. But see, we can take it off and we have our locating holes. Let's see if I can get this into the picture. Our locating holes there to, for alignment. All right, so um, I think that's good for today. Um, tomorrow, we're probably going to get into um, doing some of the, what's called the back of the neck, the grip shape. Um, and maybe do the, the uh, transfer, or rather transition and the headstock thickness and taper. So um, thanks for watching today, and then uh, we'll see you tomorrow.